Yes, sir. Um, one of the things that I'm struggling with at Milropa is actually the teachings on form and emptiness. Yeah. And um, I hear um, some of the teachers talk about, particularly the Tibetan teachers talk about this, the, the middle way as being sort of, they actually use the word smear, where it's sort of like half and half. Yeah. And then, but, and then I'm also trying to get that it's fully form and fully emptiness. Yeah. And if an empty piano falls in your empty head, you <coughs> die. And <laughs> yeah. That's my experience. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it's not all that neat. Yeah. Um, let's try to anchor it in your own awareness right now. We'll see if we can connect that with something you're aware of right now. Um, we can start by, you can simply relax the mind and rest in your own present awareness. And you'll probably notice a couple of things as you do this. That if you just very much feel into your immediate, simple feeling of being before you think about it or conceptualize it. There's one constant experience that you have. And it's the simple, ongoing feeling of existence, the simple feeling of being. And that's something that's ever-present. And it's actually the, goal, the doorway to the divine in a certain sense, if you can sort of plumb the depths of that simple feeling. But you might notice that that feeling is also an awareness, that you're aware of this room right now, this room is arising in your awareness. You can hear my voice. That's arising in your awareness. You can see these sights, yes? These are all objects arising in your awareness. All the things that you're aware of right now is the world of form. So whether it's me or my voice or the backdrop or if, we, if the these are open, you can see the clouds, you can see the mountains. That's all the world of form. And the interesting thing about the world of form is that it's arising in your awareness. Yes? Is that okay? So now, that sort of a sense of the world of form. Now we can now try to get a sense of emptiness, which is on the side of consciousness. So the first thing you notice is that the awareness that you have itself is a kind of vast space or container in which everything is arising. Yes. So you can, if you actually try to get a sense of the seer or the witness, the awareness, that itself is nothing you can see. In other words, you can see sights, but you can't see the seer. You can hear sounds, but you can't hear the hearer. So the witness is that which is aware of everything that's arising, but you can't see the witness. If you can see the witness, that's just another object. So as you rest in the witness, the witness is just this awareness you have, and all these things are arising moment to moment. First thing you notice about the witness is it doesn't have any qualities itself. It's just an empty space in which this is all arising. So emptiness is not a concept. It, it, it's, it's really, that's, that's exactly what emptiness isn't. It's not a thought or an idea or a concept. It's this vast, transparent openness in which everything is arising moment to moment. So you sort of have a sense of that, sort of the emptiness that your awareness is, and all of this is arising in that vast, open, empty awareness. So emptiness is the dharmakaya. It's the fundamental, ever-present openness in which the world of form arises. Those two are ultimately not separate in the sense that there's not just an emptiness as a pure blank. It's the emptiness in which things are arising. Okay, so emptiness and form are one taste in that sense. They're always occurring together and arising together, co-emergent manifestation. What the ultimate goal of awakening is for you to relax into this vast emptiness this vast openness in which all, everything is arising, and yet also realize that it's all arising within you. Okay? So even if you're just aware and you're looking at the clouds out there, the clouds are arising in your awareness. As a matter of fact, the clouds are arising in you. In this vast openness and emptiness that you are is what all these objects are arising in. You can actually taste the sky in that sense. Um, Trump used to say another slightly wacky saying, but it's like the sky turns into a big blue pancake and falls on your head. Now, what that, what that means is that this blue thing out, seems to be out there, and you're in here looking at the blue sky out there. But when subject and object collapse, that blueness actually is on the inside of you. The sky is inside of your awareness. And that's when the, it seems like it falls on your head, because that, it's, you're actually touching it. 
The mountain isn't out there. It's in your awareness. It's in your being. The mountain is a texture of yourself. It's a texture of your awareness. You can actually taste it. So what we're trying to do on the one hand is understand the world of form that's arising moment to moment, but it's arising in this openness or emptiness that is your primordial condition. And ultimately what you want to do is honor both of them, but you start by disidentifying with all form. And that's the, first, that's the primary move in, in meditation and awakening, is that the world of form, which and its partial aspect is called samsara, is exactly what you don't want to identify with. Because forms arise, they stay a bit, they pass. They arise, they stay a bit, they pass. We, we always phrase it using the Buddhist first noble truth, forms <coughs> arise, stay a bit, torture you, and pass. <laughs> that's the first noble truth, and that's sort of what they do. Whatever form arises in your awareness stays there, messes with you really bad, leaves scars, and moves on. And that's the nature of samsara. So, the problem is we tend to identify with one of these forms. So, for example, Ken Wilber, this is Ken Wilber's body. So, if I identify with this form of Ken Wilber, then I'm set apart from the other forms. And that's the subject-object duality. But actually, Ken Wilber is a form arising in my awareness. Just like this chair is arising in my awareness, the room is arising in I am that awareness. I am not Ken, I am not the chair, I am not the... So you want to start by disidentifying with everything that's arising. And that's the radical, radical finding <coughs> of Nirvana, the finding of the ever-present witness that is itself vast emptiness. And you find this even in, in Vedanta. So Ramana Maharshi used to say the world is illusory, Brahman alone is real, Brahman is the world. So that's kind of the steps you go through. And incidentally, that's one of the easy ways that you integrate environmental studies with religious studies. Religious studies <laughs> will point out that the world is illusory. In other words, nature is illusory, Gaia is illusory. Ecology, all illusion, all part of the world of form. Brahman alone is real. Emptiness alone is real. Your primordial self alone is real. So you have to disidentify with objects and find this ever-present witness that you are. That's also your original face, the face you had before your parents were born, the face you had before the Big Bang. Once you find that, that's the Brahman, is Brahman alone is real. Then the third step is Brahman is the world. That rehabilitates ecology and unites it with heaven. So that re rehabilitates earth and unites it with heaven. So the ultimate goal is to find heaven and earth united in this non-dual one taste. And that's the union of emptiness and form. Thank you.